Hello, it's Micah here with a really quick video on faith, hope, and charity. Just the definitions of them. Um, as always, the videos, um, the paper that you're seeing here um, appears on the website totally for free. Uh, might be a slightly different than the version you see in this video. I make mistakes, and so I will edit them out as I do them. Um, it's a kind of a archaic, I guess is the correct word, uh, procedure that we go through when we make these papers. So um, I definitely have some things that fall through the cracks and that I read, and I think that did not sound right, like uh, con uh, conjecture, um, for example. Um, and I'll try to just, if I make a mistake like that uh, grammatically or, or otherwise, I'll put it in the, con or the, the description of the video, and I will definitely edit it out of the paper. Um, so that the paper you see here might not be the one that you actually uh, download, but it'll be obviously close. Um, totally free, it doesn't cost you anything. As always, I, I feel very strongly about priestcraft, so I don't want that to happen. Um, this Faith, Hope, and Charity is, a, is basically a, I would say, a, like a zoomed-in uh, look at these real, real quick. Um, if you want a more in-depth talk about uh, this, um, I will recommend going to the lectures on faith later in this paper, uh, frequently. Um, but I also have a, a series called, um, Agency and Progression, The Hinge Points of Life. That would be another one that would, uh, bring this into a lot more clarity for you. So, here we go. Uh, you might think, as a Christian, that you understand what these three words mean. And you most certainly, as a Latter-day Saint, assume that you know what these three words mean. However, I know from conversations that I have had and that I read that the grand majority of members still fail to grasp what these three words actually mean. For example, there are members who say, all you need to do is love. And there are other members who say, no, that is incorrect. That's a sectarian notion. Uh, both are wrong and both are right. If you understand what the real definition of charity is, then yes, charity is all one, all that one needs. If, however, if you, however, have a warped definition of what charity is, then you're incorrect in assuming that that whatever warped definition you have is all that you need. First and foremost, before I even begin, people need to understand that there is a difference between brotherly kindness or love and that of charity. They're not the same. They're, they're related. Love and brotherly kindness is part of charity, but but uh, um, charity is so much more than that. I don't believe that I'm going out on a limb when I say that the grand majority of members do not possess a fullness of charity. And I will explain this fully later when I define the terms. And you'll go, oh, yeah, I don't think members have a fullness of charity, or a lot of members. Some do. Brotherly kindness and worldly love refer to treating your neighbor as yourself, meaning you are showing acts of kindness. It also, it's also important for me to point out at the onset that one needs to understand with all of these terms, there are currently in the world at least three understood definitions. There's the world's definition of the world, the word, the sectarian uh, or common Christian theology definition of the of the word, and then there's the Lord's definition. Obviously, the the world and the sectarians can have multiple definitions as things change over time, but the Lord's definition has not changed since the beginning of time. The first and most important thing that you need to understand about every single one of these words is that they are all action words. They are all verbs to the Lord. They're not feelings. They're not ideas. They're not arbitrary thoughts. They're not impossible to define. They are actions. Okay? Starting with faith. That's the first one. What's the, so what's the worldview? I break this up into worldview, sectarian view, and then the truth. What's, what's the worldview? Okay, what does the world mean when it uses the word faith? Well, almost exclusively when I have heard the word uh, faith used in the world, it is used to convey an idea of trust, loyalty, fidelity, etc. For example, I have faith in my husband. I have faith that my car will get me there. The sectarian view. Faith in the sectarian notion is, is used in multiple ways. One common way is blind faith, 
where something bad happens and a religious person is unable to explain why. So they simply say, just have faith, which roughly translates to, I don't have an answer for you. Just blindly follow. It's almost synonymous with don't ask questions. It's almost in the form of a threat, right? The people be like, oh, why is this happening? And it's like, have faith, like don't ask questions. Another way faith is commonly used is to define something that is incomprehensible, i.e. you are not supposed to understand God, right? He is in all things and he's through all things and he's in your heart. You're just supposed to have faith in him, meaning faith is to believe in something that is nothing. For something that is incomprehensible is nothing. There are things that we don't understand, but we know that there is an explanation for it, a law behind it. We just don't know it. The sectarian notion is that there is no law behind it. It is unexplainable. And we have to just have faith and accept that it is unexplainable and that you will never understand it. The last way that faith is commonly used is almost a synonym to karma, meaning like everything, just have faith, everything will work out in the end. It's almost a hakuna matata mentality, like have no worries. Or the way the Lord explains it, all is well in Zion. Okay, so what's the Lord's view? What's the truth? I break this up into three, but I don't go into the third, and I'll explain that when I get to it. What's the basic understanding of faith? Faith is the Lord. Je- faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the act of doing what the Lord tells you to do. Faith without the do or the works is dead. What's the intermediate understanding of faith? Faith is the substance of, So it's something, the principle of action in all intelligent beings and is not only the moving cause of all action in intelligent beings, faith is also a principle of power in all intelligent beings, whether on heaven or on earth. Real faith has to be based on knowledge, on things which are true, and faith that leads to life and salvation has to center in Christ. Three things are necessary in order that any rational and intelligent being may exercise faith in God unto life and salvation. One, the idea that he actually exists. Two, a correct idea of his character, perfections and attributes. And three, an actual knowledge that the course of life which he is pursuing is according to his will. Now, for an advanced understanding of what faith is according to the Lord, with faith, hope, and charity, I will not attempt in this paper to give an advanced understanding of these these words and their definitions. One must do this on his or her own. But I will tell you, there is no better resource in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on faith, hope, and charity than that of Joseph Smith's Lectures on Faith which I provide for free on my website. So if you want to download them there, check them out. Hope. So what's the world's view of hope? Hope, according to the world, is almost entirely used to describe a desire for a positive outcome. I I hope I passed that test. The other way the world uses the word is as a synonym for dreams. Like it's a list of things that you want to accomplish or have or have done, like a bucket list kind of thing. These are typically not goals. Because goals, when done properly, have steps that you need to take in order to accomplish them. Hope, on the other hand, in the world is just something that you throw out into the ether and you just hope that it comes back favorably. The sectarian view. Hope is that of a wish or desire of something positive. And it's always positive from the Lord. So what's the Lord's view What's the truth? The basic understanding that the, 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 the foundation you need to get down is hope is one's trust in the Lord. It is made manifest, the action, by listening or hearkening, is another way of saying it, to the voice of the Savior. Intermediate. When one has hope, he trusts 
that the Lord will fulfill all of his promises. This does not mean that he believes the Lord will prevent bad things from happening. And he'll only allow good things to happen, right? That's not right. True hope, trust in the Lord, is made manifest. Its actions is when one listens to the Lord and then hearkens to it, does what the Lord tells him to do. The act of doing what the Lord says, which is faith, is a manifestation of one's hope or trust in the Lord. This is shown repeatedly by prophets who hear the Lord and then do, and then when they are in this life or death situation, they say something along the lines of, and I have mul there's multiple cases of this, but they say something along the lines of, I know that the Lord has the power to save my life, but if he chooses not to, and myself or we, if we die, I still know that he is going to take care of me. Hope is the act of enduring through life, regardless of whether or not it's a good or bad. For when you trust God, you trust that he is doing what is best for you and those around you. And that ultimately, when the time comes, the Lord will be your advocate with the Father. Our hope, our trust in the Lord is strengthened as we exercise act in faith. Once again, with faith, hope, and charity, I will not attempt in this paper to give an advanced understanding of these words or definition. One must do this on his or her own. But I will tell you three times, there is no better resource on faith, hope, and charity than that of Joseph Smith's lectures on faith, provided for free on my website and other places. You can get you can get them for free. They used to be in um, the uh, scriptures, our, our quad. They used to be in the back of the Doctrine and Covenants, uh, but members, um, I couldn't handle it, so they, they took them out. Um, shock of shocks, and now and now we don't we now we're you know parroting the world's view and sectarian views on these, and we wonder why. Well, that's why the lectures on faith were removed. So, last one, charity. What's the world's view on this? Well, when the world thinks of charity, they think of donating money, time, resources to an organization or cause that specifically benefits a target group or audience, typically a minority or poor or needy group. Um, the sectarian view. Okay, they either confuse or conflate charity with love and brotherly kindness and adopt that definition or they turn it into, much like faith, an unquantifiable, unexplainable, unmeasurable feeling in your heart. The reason why they do this is to avoid judgment, thus avoiding all responsibility and accountability. And they can then set the terms themselves. Terms that they know that they either are already fulfilling or can easily fulfill. So charity or love in this sectarian worldview or in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, right? It happens all the time in the church, too. It's thrown out as an answer to any question that's like, what should we be doing, right? And they do this because their definition of, quote, unquote, love and charity is all the things listed above. So if someone presses them and says, okay, what do you mean by that specifically? They'll just lift off items that have absolutely nothing to do with charity or love, but things that they know that they themselves are already doing. They then can pat themselves on the back because they've only listed things that they're doing, and they take a sigh of relief as they exclaim, all is well in Zion. For example... Ask a woman in the church, what does it mean to be a nurturer of a child? The answer to this is simple. It means to teach, to homeschool, and raise your kids personally. And I could do a whole paper on just this topic with, I mean, quotes from Joseph Smith to Ezra Taft Benson, just up the wazoo, okay? doctrine on this is crystal clear but 
That will not be the answer given to you by 99.9% .9 of women in the church. They will respond almost exclusively with, well, uh, I th that means to love your kids. Uh, that's what that means. Imagine for just a second if you asked men what it meant to provide the necessities of life. And their response was, well, uh, it means to love your children. <laughs> they would be laughed to scorn. Yet, that's what women do here. And the reason why a man might say that when asked that question, but he doesn't, you won't find that happen in the church, but if he does, the reason for that is exactly the same reason why women respond with, it means love. And why is that? Because if pressed on that answer and asked, okay, what does that mean? To, okay, so I mean, nurture means love. Okay, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to love your kids? Women then can respond with whatever they want, and they do. I have heard the craziest responses to that. It is completely subjective. So your thought process is that men's requirements can be quantified down to a decimal point in their bank account, but women's responsibilities are whatever they say they are. God forbid. So love charity is used like a mathematician uses the variable X, with its meaning completely up to the person themselves. And because of that, they will only list things that they themselves are doing. A side note that's kind of, I find hilarious. This this will start a flame war in every relief society that I have ever asked this question. And I've lived in Idaho. I served my mission in Philadelphia, so I was in Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware. I've been in Canada and Winnipeg, Thunder Bay, Kenora. Everywhere I have gone, I've tried to ask this question just to see the result, and it has resulted in a flame war every time because what ends up happening is one woman will answer and define love as a series of things that she does and then another woman in the class will recognize that she does not do any of those things and then will counter with her own list and then the war begins it is completely subjective you will find with the wicked who take the truth to be hard, that they won't even be able to define charity or love, and it will break down into contention. So what's the Lord's view? What's the truth? The basic understanding is that love or brotherly kindness is when you do things for others that benefits them and, and has no clear immediate benefit to yourself. Charity is when one does or is willing to do something that benefits a person at sacrifice to oneself. It is the crowning attribute of the Godhead, the father giving his son and the son giving his life. What's the intermediate understanding? The prophet Joseph Smith taught that one cannot or does not obtain a fullness of charity until after one's calling and election. It's found in the teaching of the prophet Joseph Smith, page 9, under the section, Perfect Love. Moroni echoes this in Moroni 7, 44, 48. Wherefore, cleave unto charity, which is the greatest of all. Charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart, that ye may be filled with this love, which he has bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ that ye may become the sons of God, that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified even as he is pure. Charity is the mind or will of the Father. So to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, might, mind, and strength is charity. Joseph Smith taught that a religion that does not teach the sacrifice of all worldly things for the Savior, it will never generate the faith necessary unto salvation. Or, as the Lord puts it so plainly, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
one shows one's love by doing whatsoever the Lord commands us. And once the Lord has proved that individual, he will appear to him and seal him his, giving that person a fullness of charity, which makes you in completion a son of Christ. Once again, with the advanced, with faith, hope, and charity, I will not attempt in this paper to give an advanced understanding of these words or definitions. One must do this on his or her own. But there is no better resource on faith, hope, and charity than Joseph Smith's Lectures on Faith, provided free on my website and in many other locations. In conclusion, the simplest way to explain faith, hope, and charity is with that of the relationship between a parent and a child. The parent tells the child to do something. If the child has hope or trust in the parent, he will listen to the parent. The act of doing what the parent said is an act of faith which confirms and validates the child's hope or trust in the parent. And if the parent is a good parent, once the actions play out, the child will gain a knowledge that he can trust or have hope in the parent because the parent did lead them down a path which ultimately was for their benefit. The way that the father gives his will to us is through the Holy Ghost. If we have hope in God, when he speaks, we stop and we listen. The act of doing what the Lord says is faith, and that faith validates or confirms our hope or trust in the Lord. The more we do this process, the stronger our hope or trust in the Lord becomes. If we love the Lord, we will do all that he says. We will align our will with that of the Holy Ghost. Our own will is sacrificed and given to the Lord. Once the Lord has, quote, the Lord has thoroughly proved him and finds that that man is determined to serve him at all hazards, then the man will find his calling and election made sure. Then it will be his privilege to receive the other comforter. Teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. At which point in time the individual is given a fullness of charity. His mind, his will is so in line with the saviors that they become one as the will of the son is with the father. As I said at the conclusion of each the faith, hope, and charities, I would highly recommend take the time to prayerfully study the lectures on faith for an advanced understanding. If you say all we need is love, and by that you mean all we need to do is to sacrifice our entire will and be completely obedient to the Savior, then you're correct. However, if when you say all we need is love, what you mean is a warm, fuzzy, unexplainable feeling in our belly, i.e. a chemical response of our bodies, then you are a sectarian and you are wrong. God bless. Godspeed. I love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.